daunting. Um, I'm a huge fan of the original Top Gun. Saw it six times in 1986. I was 14. Wow. I was the perfect age. It ran in cinemas for a year in London, yeah, that's, that film. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. It, it, back in the day, that sometimes those movies just played and played and played. And I've seen it so many times, obviously, on VHS. And it's a, it's a cultural milestone for so many people, you know, a film like that. You know, I didn't my biggest fear was disappointing fans of that movie who yeah. are all going into the cinema with their arms crossed going guys it's a terrible idea why are you <laughs> making a sequel to top gun i hate you i don't want to watch this movie and um I, I would be the same way if i was going in to watch it you know i want every film to succeed and i want everyone to do well in this industry but um uh you know i would be suspicious you know, you think it's going to be a cash grab. And of course, you've got somebody who sets the bar very high. The quality control threshold is incredibly high in Tom Cruise. And the original producer, Jerry Bruckheimer, a great director with Joe Kaczynski um, and another key collaborator, Chris McQuarrie. And, and these guys, they just really know what they're doing. And yeah. one of the first things that um, they filmed actually was the the opening montage of aircraft carrier activity. Mm. They went out and they, they filmed five days on the USS George Washington uh, in July 2018. And then they, they went back and did like a second round of additional photography the following year in around April 2019, when they shot, when they filmed the actual shot of Maverick going off the, the, the mm, carrier yeah. for real. So I had quite a lot of footage to work from to build that. But every the idea was we start the movie the same way. We use Harold Fultemeyer's music. We use the right. same the same introductory description block of text with the same font. I just changed it to say men and women. Right. Because the original 1986 just said men. And we use the same typeface for the for the actors' names. And we just wanted everyone to get their money's worth within two minutes and just go, <laughs> hey, these guys respect the movie. Yes. And we're not going to we're not going to screw with your memories and we're going to respect everything. We're going to respect Tony Scott and we give you danger zone in the first two minutes <laughs> of the movie and you will not be disappointed. And we're going to hold your hand and we're going to treat this movie with the respect that it deserves. And and. That was the that was the idea from the word go. And obviously, you never know if the movie's going to work. You know, yeah. I've seen it 300 times. We finished it in lockdown. So nobody I'd seen it with six people. That was the maximum number of people I watched the film with. But um, it's so exciting that the audiences have been responding so positively and we really invest the, the very opening of the movie with with those feels and vibes to to make sure that you're kind of won over within two minutes, you know. Absolutely. And then obviously we we the film takes its own direction and we and we kind of rediscover where Maverick is, is in his life thirty years later. But it was very daunting, Paul. I'm not going to lie to you. I felt that weight of of expectation every day. Yeah. Um just because I'm a huge fan of movie going and I, I want the movie to be as great as Tom Cruise wants it to be great. And Joe and Jerry and, and Chris McQuarrie, you know, we all, we're, we're all hungry to give the audience that incredible night out at the movies, which, you know, you love movies. I love movies. I've had spiritual experiences in cinemas over the oh, years, absolutely. watching, watching movies. And, and so everyone, who makes a film kind of sets out to try and give the audience that, but obviously it's incredibly hard to make really good films. Um, and, uh, but it, it's just, it's just so exciting that, that people seem to be loving this and it's selling tickets and really giving people a terrific emotional experience, you know, which is what Tom is all about. Tom Cruise is all about anyway. Well, I mean, and piggybacking off of that, I mean, the film, is already a tremendous success. Uh, Tom Cruise's biggest opening ever. It's already yeah. 300 million worldwide thus far. This is a this is a week out. I yeah, mean, it's insane. That's insane. And people are going, I've seen it twice. 
and people are going back again and again. My my yeah. son, who is 13, you know, you wow. were 13 when you were watching the, the yeah. 86 yeah. version. He, he loves the original because he's seen it. But now he's got this Top Gun Maverick experience. He's age 13, very impressionable. And I think yeah, that's what we're seeing now you're seeing all of these these people, especially these these younger kids that are getting the Top Gun experience. Yeah, so, they really are. So, I mean is that vindicating to you? Like in that sense, like, Oh, thank God. Like, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. Paul, you know, I, I, it's an enormous relief and it's a dream come true. You know, yeah. you work, you work your you work through your career and you, if you have one experience like this in your life, you treasure it because it's so oh, rare, this sure, kind of thing. Sure. And so, you know, we're all pinching ourselves. And, you know, I spoke with Joe Kaczynski. I've sp spoken with Chris McQuarrie and we've all emailed and texted each other. And we're all so excited and thrilled that people are responding to it and that it's doing everything we wanted it to do. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. It was an incredibly long, intense meat grinder of of a movie to work on because there was so much footage and it was it was an enormous challenge creatively to build the kind of tapestry of of images and dialogue and sound effects and music and and graphics to get the kind of balance of emotion and character and action and tension and you know ad adventure just right yeah um but like a lot of things, you know, the movies you you start, it's not very long. I mean, it's not very good and it's way too long and you slowly refine it and refine it and refine it and refine it until yeah. you make sure that every second really works. And it's just a continuous emotional flow, you know, and you don't get bumped out of the film. And that that is really down to kind of Tom's decades of experience making these movies and and setting the quality control bar so high and not not wanting to compromise really and you know if if a scene wasn't working we would go back and like have another go at it you know sometimes rewrite it sometimes refilm it go back and get additional angles or lines or close-ups to make a scene really work and it's all credit to Tom and Joe Kaczynski that, uh, you know, and the whole creative team, but, but really that, that we just, we were just uncompromising in our drive for excellence and quality from the word go. And I'm fully on board with that. You know, yeah. I'm one of these guys who kind of wakes up every morning thinking, how can I do great work today? You know, it's the only thing you have control of in your life is, is what you do yeah. on a daily basis in your career to try and, you know, move the needle into the green a little bit more. And so I can't tell you, it's just the biggest relief. It's, yeah, I pinch myself. I'm really in taking a moment, even though I'm deep in editing Mission Impossible 7 and Mission Impossible 8 right now. And they're, they're rolling cameras and I've got a live feed from the set, right? Just off screen here. <laughs> um, uh, and, but yeah, I, I am taking a moment to look around and, thank my wife you know who who supported me in this crazy adventure because we moved to Los Angeles for a year I've got a 16 year old and a 13 year old daughters oh, wow. so to take them out of school move to LA you know move to Mar Vista and they went to school in in this tiny little school in Venice and I was cycling to Jerry Bruckheimer's office every day I love to cycle I think it's a great way of kind of clearing your head in the morning and in the oh, evening that's great and yeah, so I, I'm very grateful to my wife and to my kids for kind of going with me. And and we started, you know, pretty much four years ago on this movie. And it was a two year journey to get it finished until we finished the final sound mix. And then we've just been waiting for this moment to to release it. But it seems to have really popped at the right time. You know, yeah. Yeah, it's so exciting. Really Timing feels uh, like like it's really on your side for this one, especially. I mean, this yeah. is like this is like it feels like in many ways the the movie that kicked off the summer movie season, which we haven't really had in the last few years. Not yeah, like yeah. Did. Um, yeah. 
And so, you know, that brings up the question of, you know, we know that, you know, Top Gun had a number of delays uh, due to, to the pandemic. Um, did that work in your favor at all? Were you guys able to go back and tinker some more? Or do you guys just like lock it and be like, it's good, just let it be? Or were you able to go back? You know, that is a great question. And the answer is undoubtedly yes. The film is a lot better because we had time. So in February 28, no, 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 February 20. 20 no yes let me get this right yeah february 2020 i was in venice and we were about to start filming mission seven and that was when italy became a bit of a hot zone in europe yep yep yep. right and the hospitals were overwhelmed and venice within 24 48 hours just emptied of everybody and so we were all set to start filming mission mission impossible Dead Reckoning Part One, as you know that it's called now. Yes. And uh, we had to, like everyone in the world, we, we had to just pack up and go home and get safe, uh, be with our families and, and look around and wonder what's going to happen. You know, we're, we're all in the dark about where this is going. Yeah. But um, clearly we weren't rolling cameras on mission. And so Tom Cruise said this is an opportunity guys to really look at top gun and stress test every second of the movie make sure that the music is perfect throughout um and let's really dial it in you know and i think if we had been trying to uh film mission seven and kind of do the finishing touches to top gun at the same time i'm sure we wouldn't have had such a great film um we really were able to work on every sequence and look at every line of dialogue, every moment of the film, and really get the brain trust to focus on on it and and just figure out if there was any way of improving any moment from the beginning of the movie to the end. And I think we did. The music evolved and improved. Um, all our song choices evolved and improved. And, you know, we we had the Lady Gaga song at that point, and we were right. we were kind of basing some of the score around her chord progressions. And and we were able to get the visual effects absolutely world class. You know, we we I did visual yeah. effects reviews was- every night with in a, with LA. So I was in London. Uh, Joe and my team were in Los Angeles and we were doing visual effects reviews every day for several hours because obviously there isn't an F-14 that's still flying in the world and there are no Su-57 enemy planes that we can use. Right. So <laughs> all those are skinned versions of F-18s or L-39 jets, but the VFX are done so beautifully and seamlessly, it doesn't really even occur to you that they're not real, those planes. Uh, oh, Yeah. I had no you know, I, honestly I didn't even know that when you said it, that it I doesn't assumed, it doesn't I assumed even, all like, the planes were real based on yeah, everything that I like, there are no there's no F14 that flies in the world I mean there may be one or two in Iran but you can't fly them anymore but we did get a we got a, an F14 from a museum <laughs> so what you see on the runway so the the, the F14 that's sitting in the hangar when Mav and rooster run up and the one they get into and and like taxi out onto the taxiway that is a real plane that they're in the canopy uh-huh. worked and but the engines didn't work and it couldn't fly so what they did is they actually did all the aerial stuff in an f-18 and then used visual effects to change the background to make it look like an f-14 oh, so the whole end dogfight it's totally totally seamless but wow. you see like the 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 emer- the ejection handles kind of floating right. above their heads, which you recognize from the first movie because that's what Mav and Goose had in the first movie. And, but every single shot they're added. So the whole background is, the old the jet background is changed wow. for all that aerial dogfight at the end. And you would, just would never know because it's, it's done so beautifully. That's and so cool. I had no yeah, idea. Yeah, it is cool, it is cool. So that's what we were working on. That kind of stuff is what we were working on. And then we were the first film back to sound mix after the lockdown. Um, and we, the sound of this movie obviously is half of the experience in the theater. 
you know yeah. people people know they're going to buy a movie ticket and get this incredible sonic experience for their for their whole body you know because the theater kind of thumps with uh the the afterburners and the engines of the planes and and the every time you cut to a plane we kind of smash cut with the sound of a of a gunshot or an explosion or a roar or something so that the soundtrack is constantly alive and we the sound mix again we we did not compromise tom was like this has to be the best sounding movie that can possibly exist based on the technology and the talents of the people in this room you know it's like yeah. the audience is going to expect a world class experience and we are going to give it to them and it took 7 weeks to mix the sound on this film wow which is a very long time for a hollywood movie um especially a 2 hour movie and the sound mixer mark taylor sound effects mixer he had done no time to die just before lockdown and oh. that was a 3 hour movie right as you know we've all seen yeah, yeah. it the long long james bond movie love the film but they mixed that in three weeks. So just imagine, and we had more than double that amount of time for a film that's 45 minutes shorter. Wow. And so the, the, what you get is this beautiful end result where we do not compromise. And Tom is there, he comes in, Tom Cruise comes in every week, listens, sometimes twice a week, would come in and listen and be very detailed in his notes. And, you know, I, we would feel the kind of weight of expectation of of him but also the audience out there who the original top gun sonically it's still fantastic you listen oh, to what amazing. they did in 1986 sounds and amazing. they were doing it on 35 mil mag that amazing sound designer cc hall it's it's truly what they achieved it's like what ben burt did in star wars you know it's yeah, yeah. it's it's uh, you're moving heaven and earth to create an a timeless movie soundtrack you know that hopefully thousands of people are going to watch millions of people are going to watch over the coming decades if you're fortunate to make a classic classic film so we were there every day with just trying to make sure it was as good as it can be you know and um as i said i love movies and i'm a geek and i enjoyed every second of sitting in that movie in that in that sound mixing stage even though the covid protocols were very strict and we couldn't be in there much time of the day limited numbers and all that but it was uh, it was super exciting, um, super super exciting to be a part of delivering that you know world class experience to the audience. You know, Absolutely. it's so exciting when you're working on a studio movie and you have these resources. Oh, that's yeah. that's that's the expectation. You know, you're you're making literally the a state of the art product that hopefully lots of people will enjoy, and we didn't want to let them down. <laughs> <laughs> so you've worked with you've worked on uh, two Tom Cruise films already that are in the can and now Top Gun Maverick and now you have the Mission Impossible the next two Mission Impossibles yeah what is unique to you about working with Tom and working on on Tom Cruise films right um a couple of things one is they in terms of editorial they are usually single protagonist movies with a subjective point of view which is through the you're, you're experiencing the film with maverick or with ethan hunt and he's at the top of the pyramid of characters in these movies so in top gun you've got maverick you know rooster and hangman payback fanboy phoenix and bob and penny and when you're cutting the scenes you're using that as a as a guide of like how many close-ups to give each character and how to how much of the scene you are, you can allow to play through the other characters and it's the same in mission if you watch a film like mission impossible fallout you're following kind of ethan's emotional journey almost exclusively all the way through the film yeah. you're feeling his point of view and it's a team movie so you've got benji and luther and ilsa and and you know, in Rogue Nation, we had Brandt as well. Um, and obviously in Fallout, we had Julia, his wife. And, yeah, yeah. But, but you very rarely leave his point of view. So that, that's just something to be aware of when you're, when you're telling these single protagonist stories to, to bear that subjective point of view in mind, because Tom really likes the kinds of movies where you identify and follow a character 
on an emotional journey, transformative journey from the beginning of the movie to the end. It's kind of classic storytelling, you know. Right. Classic and hero's journey. Yeah, yeah, classic hero's journey, exactly. And so, so that's one thing to be aware of. The other thing is that he really knows what he's doing, but he's not afraid to constantly reinvent the film as it's as cameras are rolling so every single day he will sit down with his key collaborator uh, on mission it's chris mccrory it'll be with joe's joe kaczynski and and chris was quite involved in in top gun in some ways because he wrote the script and he was a producer on the film right and he at uh, the end of every day constantly he'll he'll be thinking about everything that that we've learned about the character in the filming schedule so far and he'll be looking at the pages for the next day and going can we improve this mm. can we can we is there any way we can take everything we've learned and and make tomorrow's pages even better and um and also do we need to go back and refilm something if it's not good enough you know have we learned something which means we go back to this other set and film a bit of extra stuff so what you end up with is a, are these films that that don't that that they they evolve so much through the entire process because he's very confident in his opinions and and what he wants to give to the audience and so the movies never feel like they never kind of get stuck you know that they're they're just a constantly evolving entity through the the whole two years basically one year of filming and then another year of editing after the filming we're editing during the filming but in terms of just dedicated post-production it's another year and that does result in a in films with a very kind of unique um kind of uh fresh feel as opposed to kind of quite heavily developed on the page you know and i think that's one of the reasons why these movies well, why audiences really gravitate towards them or, or have a, a really great emotional experience because we're constantly dialing it in through the whole process, you know, which is not how everyone does it. Um, so those are the two things that I would say. And, and the other thing which everyone will tell you about Tom is that he works the hardest of anybody on the set. And to have number one on the call sheet be such an incredible role model for all the other cast and every head of department and all the crew it means you just get people who really want to be there and want to do great work every day and don't want to compromise and that is again no one phones it in you know we're all working as hard as we possibly can every day to live up to his expectations and to ultimately to the audience's expectations so those are the things i would say about working with tom how involved is he when you're like just you're sitting and editing and doing your work how involved is is tom on that in that aspect is he so it depends where he is in the world um <laughs> usually when on mission for example well he was in la quite a lot so he actually visited Bruckheimer's offices and, and and reviewed stuff with us in person a lot on top gun but in on mission impossible i'm quite often working very closely with chris mcquarrie the director um and tom will usually call us once a day sometimes in the afternoon and we will give him a very detailed breakdown of everything we've done that day it, down to like shot selection in this in certain sequences and he's been on set every day so he knows all the coverage and we'll explain discoveries that we've made and ideas that we've had and bounce ideas off him and we really want his input he has final cut on these movies you know we have a committee of one um which does make the process kind of relatively easy initially and until we kind of start to invite an audience you know a friends and family audience to watch the film we're all collaborating and ultimately tom is making the final decision on any questions we have about the film um so he's very involved is what i would say uh no aspect of the process is he not involved in you know wardrobes and prop design and locations and casting and then and then in post production you know heavily editing and adr and music and and visual effects 
um, and sound design. I mean, every part of it. And he loves it. And color correction right at the end of the process. When, wow. when we're reviewing the final color, he's sitting in the theater with us watching. Um, so he takes his job very seriously and he really cares about making sure that the, the movie is awesome, you know, yeah. because he wants, he just wants the audience to have a great time. He wants to really deliver. He knows people are, you know, have had a, well, we've all had a tough time in the last couple of years, but he, he wants people to, you know, leave the house, get a babysitter and drive to a theater and, and spend their money and just have a great night at the movies. You know, that's yeah. what I want as well. That's what we all yeah, want. Sure. Everyone, Absolutely. whenever we sit down in a movie theater, we want a great night at the movies. And sometimes yeah. it is, and sometimes it's a disappointment, but, there's no, nothing beats that feeling when you're just lost in a movie and you never want it to end and the crowd are in it. and It's just so cool. It's the best. It's the best. <laughs> it is. Um, so uh, we just saw the trailer for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. <laughs> so that's already generating excitement. Uh, yeah. so I'm curious because there's been a number of delays with, with these next two Mission Impossible films. Um, are you in a similar circumstance with those films that you were with Top Gun Maverick and that you have more time to go in and, and do some, some refining or yeah. it, like, how is that process going in terms of, of, of those films? It's, uh, listen, they, both of them are very ambitious, very complex, very huge scale films, right? And, you know, no one watching them will be disappointed. It's, they're just gigantic. And th we are, you know, Chris McQuarrie has obviously learned so much from making two other ones. They are, they're, they're just epic in scale and scope. Um, it will be a race to the finish line because we're making two of them. Yeah. And we, yeah, we'll, we're, we're not going to, you know, we're going to use every second we have to make them as good as possible. Um, and, you know, during the lockdown, we ne none of us knew how long that was going to be. You know, yeah, yeah, we all thought we might be locked down for a month or two and then stuff would maybe go back to normal. You know? yeah. <laughs> but obviously it didn't. So there was every chance Top Gun could have come out, you know, a few weeks after we finished it in like August 2018. Sorry, right. 2020 could have done, but we didn't know um so we we did work we didn't take our foot off the gas and we're not taking our foot off the gas with these films either but we are rolling cameras on mission seven today and i i spent three months in south africa at the beginning of this year where we were filming uh, uh some of the third act of mission eight you know and again collaborating with tom and chris macquarie every day on on that sequence to keep evolving it and making it better and better and i swear some of the stuff he's doing i mean paul it it's, it's historic man i'm not exaggerating you're going to watch it and you're going to go you know <laughs> tom's done it again he has done it again and it is amazing to have a ringside seat to that stuff honestly oh, you, you're, you're seeing it happen live and I remember I had some similar feelings to when I saw when when they landed the Top Gun jets and we would watch like that sequence where Maverick does the canyon run, the low level, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're going 700 miles an hour through that canyon, 40 feet off the deck. And the pilot, one pilot was given permission to fly Tom that route. There's one guy alive, one guy in the Navy who was qualified and given permission to fly that. And we, they did it four times and the first three times we were watching the footage and we just weren't feeling the danger and the, and the, and the excitement of it. And then Tom said, right, let's really go for it this time. And this pilot called Walleye, he's the, like the top pilot in the blue angels over there. And he, he really, he, he like, he went for it to burned and turned or, you know, <laughs> and, and smashed through that Canyon and, he can't even see the terrain up ahead of him. He's having to anticipate the moves because oh, wow. they're going so fast. He knows it like the back of his hand. It's called Star Wars Canyon, ultimately, ironically, that 
that <laughs> that place where we fly because it's just like a it's like a trench run. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like it's like in Tatooine, you know, or somewhere like that where Luke, you can imagine Luke like training his, you know, to learn how to fly his um, his speeder. But um, they they came back after that fourth run. It was a Friday afternoon, and we put the card out. We took the card out of the camera and put it in the TV. There was about 20 people watching all the cast, all the Navy guys and the other Top Gun pilots. And we watched it and we were like, holy smokes, that is extraordinary. It's so low. You see the shadow of the plane on the wall oh, yeah. sometimes. It's so fast. And we were like, that is going in the movie. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> and honestly, I, I had the same, that feeling that you get when you watch that scene in Top Gun Maverick, that when he says, I'm setting the target at two, two minutes, 15 seconds. And what I love is that we've educated the audience so that they all go, what? You yeah, can't do that, yeah, that's yeah. impossible. Like all the pilots <laughs> are like, what's going on? And, and, and then you see Maverick do it and, and you're just going, you just feel like the emotion of, oh my God, is he actually gonna do it? And you're watching Cyclone get more and more kind of, <laughs> he starts off furious and then he, you just see him like melting going, Dan, Maverick's gonna actually do this. And he's having to self-target. And you also understand about G's so we've talked to you when you see 7.5, 8, 8.5, and then when it gets to 10 and Hangman goes, damn. <laughs> you know, you all know what that means as the audience because we've kind of given you your broccoli in the training sequences. So you can just enjoy that sequence and really understand all the terminology and the stakes and the limitations and all that stuff. It's so cool. But anyway, that feeling that you have, there's going to be some moments in mission eight where you have that same kind of oh i can't believe i'm seeing this experience and you know so two years to go and then you'll see it paul and you won't <laughs> you'll remember this it'll you, be we'll worth... have this conversation and you'll be like shit eddie was telling me about that he, eddie told wrong? me this was going to be mind-blowing people and he's going to be pretty that. hairy <laughs> pretty hairy i swear and we're, we're all sat there in south africa watching tom do this stuff amazing amazing anyway um so we're go we're going to be working flat out on these two movies to get them ready for audiences and not and again quality control threshold is like as high as it can possibly be but yeah. it's just the limitations of the technology and you know tom doesn't compromise on anything so it's it's going to be another extraordinary barnstorming you know movie going experience both of these films i mean you know I can't wait. I'm a, I love the Mission Impossible franchise. I love every one of them. They like, they always seem to get better and better. And then it, they're just, they're just like some of the best, most finely crafted films. Thanks to, to, to guys like you that are out there, you know, just giving it your all. And, you know, it shows <laughs> with Top Gun Maverick, you know, the scene you're just talking about, you know, the whole Canyon scene is truly a brilliantly edited sequence. <clears throat> and you're right. Bless every, you. every beat hits perfectly. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Amazing amazing yeah. work that's um, just that's just time and love and just you know really really working on every sequence so it just it just sings you know all the way from the beginning to the end uh it's exceptional um Eddie, thank you so much for your time and your insight. Uh, this has been great. I feel like I've learned actually so much just talking to you today. Um, I'm so pleased. Thanks, Paul. Makes me appreciate the film that much more. And I know for myself, I can say I'll probably see Top Gun Maverick at least two more times in the theater, at least. So that's a, insane. Know. I'm so I'm 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 so humbled. The whole team is so thrilled that that you feel like you want to give yourself that emotional oh, yeah. ride again you know it's, and it's so a, it's cool one I, of those movies that i absolutely would not miss not seeing again it's amazing I'm so pleased i love it i love it uh eddie thank you again so much it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you i feel like i've learned again so much <laughs> about it's Top great Run i'm i'm thrilled everything. thank you for your time paul absolutely sir thank you so much all right cheerio <laughs> bye-bye bye-bye